Well, that was just a terrible way to start this video off. I had a really fancy intros last year. Lots of music, lots of animations. Sorry. Good news is, I have a former ICB student of mine that made a new intro for me. Wait, Bull Daddy? What is that? Uh, I, I gotta do some research on this one. This may not be a good intro after all. Sorry. Alright, hi ICB viewers. Um, this is a quick recap of what happened last week, just so you basically have one spot to have sort of you know, all, all of our materials in one place. So my job right now is to basically go over, okay, what should we know walking into this week from last? And our discussions really had been all about this idea of fire. I'm going to flip this way. Okay. So we keep focusing on this idea of what is fire. And something I shared this week with you guys with fire is that we're going to find out, we're going to step away from whether or not fire would be classified as matter or energy. Because those are basically your two building blocks of what we're considered the universe to be. Matter would be the tangible, what we can touch. Energy would be the interactions or that force, like we're seeing relatively with forces and the movement of matter from one spot to the next. So instead of like trying to do this, because this became kind of a question for us, we focused on fire as more, okay, what does it have as far as needs? And so fire sort of has some things that are required. And the needs, as we refer to them, is that we need fuel, oxygen, and then some kind of ignition. Now, with ignition, we're talking really about an input energy. Now, if we were actually in class, I'd show you it doesn't always have to be another fire. So, for example, you can start fires with friction. You can start fires with thermal energy, like with light. There's a variety of ways to do this. But if one of the three of these things is not met, the fire goes out and the fire stops. And so with the whoosh bottle, we saw the case of the oxygen being depleted. With the Pringle scan, we saw the idea of the fuel being depleted, in which case that was actually the hydrogen. And in both of these, we saw you could not start them without an ignition source. So why do this? Why even begin with something so intangible? Well, the short answer to it is I'm trying to get you guys to think a little bit. And the longer answer is because it's, it's fun. It's fun to kind of look at, you know, what is something that I know to be in existence, but it's so hard to quantify and so hard to say exactly what it is. So if you're looking at, okay, well, what, what do I need to take away from week one? The answer is this. We need to know that fire is something that we can see, okay? So if we talk matter, matter has to have mass and it has to have volume, which means matter has to have density because density is a quotient of mass to volume. And so a way I had taught this in class is I basically said, hey, density is love split in half or M over V in case you ever forget that. It's silly way to kind of look at it, but it is something that helps kids remember the equation. And so if an object has a definable mass and a definable volume, well, then it should have a definable density, making it something that is considered matter. So if I were to ask you the question, is fire matter? You would have to probably talk about the mass of the fuel. Now it's volume, that's a little bit trickier. And also you could argue the mass of the fire itself is actually changing over time, which that becomes a little bit worrisome because things ha can be matter that do change mass over time. For example, a cesium-137 isotope, that's the definition of a second, as we'll learn later on, that will change mass as time goes on. But for us, to make it simplistic, I don't care so much that we know, is it matter or energy? I want us to know that matter needs to have these definitive properties. What does energy have to do? Well, energy is sort of defined as the ability to do work. And then you say, okay, well, great, but what is work? Well, when you get to physics, 
you'll find out that work is actually equal to force over a given distance. And it's actually a dot product. Now I'm writing D for distance. I really should be writing S for position. And really, these are in vectors. So it gets even more complicated because you haven't learned what vectors are yet. So most of the time, I just tell kids, hey, work is anytime you do any kind of force over any kind of distance. So if you move an object with a force, you're doing work. Now, the ability to do work is what we have defined as energy. That is super confusing. Energy is a very difficult thing to define for kids and honestly, even for adults. That's the best definition science sort of gives it. But energy, what I like to talk about it instead of this, is when we see the interaction of matter. Now, that doesn't include all kinds of energy, so it's not a great definition. But for our purposes, if we see matter interacting, mainly moving or doing a, some kind of a process, that's an energy type interaction. And our focus will kind of go back and forth. Is it matter? Is it energy? So our takeaway to sum all this up in one spot, fire has three needs. That's fuel, oxygen, and ignition, as we've defined it. Okay, matter mu has mass and volume, therefore it has density. Energy is the interaction of matter. The entirety of the known universe is made up of a matter-energy interaction. And just to show you sort of a preview where this is going, that interaction is called E equals mc squared which you may have seen before, but we'll get there, okay?